March. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. We've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15 percent off super male vitality at infowarslife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement visit infowarslife.com today to secure your super male vitality infowarslife.com you can complain about Big Brother and how this is uh, uh, a potential uh, you know, you know, program run amok. But when you actually look at the details, then I think we've struck the right balance. And if people can't trust not only the executive branch, but also don't trust Congress and don't trust uh, federal judges, to make sure that we're abiding by the Constitution, due process, and rule of law, then we're going to have some problems here. The Alex Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. Dr. Richard Stallman is our guest. We're going to go back to him in just a moment in this long segment. And, and get him to break down what he's saying. I mean, it's so simple, but it's also so important, and nobody thinks about it. The software controls you. And almost all the time when it doesn't work, it's because of the surveillance application. And by the way, we've bought all our software here, other than the Linux, Genu so stuff that a lot of our stuff runs on. I'm no tech guy, but a lot of our guys are you know, big uh, fans of what Dr. Stallman invented, the Genu system that's known as Linux. But expanding on that, it just, I mean, I, I buy a monitor in, in the studio and want to run video through it. And we've got to break into it and jack with it. You can't even buy them commercially that don't do this. You have to get specialists in and pieces of equipment just to run 
the video you want over it because it doesn't see the code from the cable or from the, the, the Blu-ray disc telling you that it's authorized. Where I bought a television about eight years ago that had a DVD player built into it. That DVD player broke. So I had an old DVD portable one in the garage. I plugged it into that in the garage so I could run on the treadmill. And it said, no, this device isn't authorized. Copyright. And I deal with this all day long. And I've had software companies send us lawsuit threats, pay money. We know you stole the software. And I call the lawyer up and go, I, we bought all our software. He goes, well, our system's picked up that you might have some stolen software. We're going to drop this. And the guy hangs up and I call back the law firm and I go, no, you're trolling to scare people to see if I'd send those, that money. And he goes, I'm not going to talk to you. And, and you know, it hangs up. It, it's like Getty Images will send stuff out on Twitter that you can embed. And clearly, I've talked to lawyers in the law. They've embedded it. They've made it embeddable. You can have it in your article because it's not on your site. It's their Twitter photos they put out and don't even tell you don't use them. Then they send you letters saying, give us a bunch of money. And most people crap their pants and pay a bunch of money. Dr. Stallman, I'm ranting. It's well, just that this stuff really frustrates me. I'd like to add to your rant, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> you're talking about DRM. Digital Restrictions Management, which is found in some malicious hardware, like those monitors and Blu-ray and DVD players, and also in software. And in fact, often it's implemented by the firmware inside the product. Now, that is a malicious functionality, and it ought to be illegal. But why is it in there? It's in there because the software is non-free, because the users don't control it. If the users controlled it, they would fix the software so it didn't maliciously restrict them. So if they want, if their goal is to attack you by imposing restrictions, they have to first attack you by making the software non-free. Now, I don't think there's anything virtuous about paying for an authorized copy of a non-free program. You see, what's bad about the non-free program is that it's non-free. An unauthorized copy of a non-free program is a nasty thing because it's proprietary, because it's non-free. It's almost as bad as an authorized copy. But And so I won't use either one. I reject them on principle. No, no, I totally agree. My point is we play in their system, and then they still come after us. Yes, they do. But please don't repeat their propaganda terms like stolen. They say that because they want to demonize sharing, but sharing is good. What's wrong is trying to stop people from sharing, which is what they're doing. Quantify your view on that and explain the difference between uh, hacking, which they've demonized as a term, versus criminal uh, breaking into computers. Oh, well, these are two different questions, and I can explain them both, but not at the same time. So the point is software should respect your freedoms, and there are four freedoms you should have. Freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish for whatever purpose. Freedom one is the freedom to study the program's source code and change it to make it function for you the way you wish. Now, those two freedoms are enough to give each user separately control over the program. But this separate control is not enough because most people are not programmers and don't know how to exercise freedom one. They don't know how to study and understand source code or change it. So we need more than just the separate control. We also need the freedom to work together and exercise collective control, which means any group of people or companies or both, whatever, any group of users should be free to work together to adapt the program to do what they want it to do and then offer copies of that to others if they wish. And that requires two more freedoms. Freedom two is the freedom to redistribute exact copies of the program, you know, copy it and distribute the copies to others. And freedom three is the freedom to copy your modified versions and distribute those to others. Those two freedoms allow the members of any group to work together and change the program to do what they want. So if you don't know how to change software, but you wish the program worked differently and it's free software, there will be others who are programmers who also would like it to work differently and they'll change it and then they'll make their version available to the public. And if they don't do this soon enough, you can join with other non-programmers to raise money and pay somebody to do it. There is business in the free software world.
world, you know, people are getting paid to develop free software. And to maintain it and to tweak it. And exactly. And you, so you can, if people want to pay you, you can take money to do it. You can also do it because you just feel like it. Uh, those are, you know, free software doesn't mean it's gratis. It doesn't mean nobody's paying anything or nobody's getting paid for anything. It means we all have freedom. Anyway, the other issue you brought up was that, was that of hacking. And what does hacking mean? Well, it's one of those words that's had many different meanings. Uh, in the 1970s, when I joined the hacker community at MIT, sometimes it meant figuring out a clever way to do something on a computer. And sometimes it meant a prank. And sometimes it meant doing something that was surprising and funny. And sometimes uh, the thing that was clever or surprising and funny might be in the area of breaking security on a computer. Of course, at that time, it wasn't for, the, for robbing anything. It was so that you could get access to the computer at night when it was sitting there going to waste because nobody was using it. And you had some schoolwork or project you wanted to do. So you got around the security and you put the computer to use. Um, of course, there's nothing to say. My, def sorry, my definition, which sort of summarizes all these things, is playful cleverness. Hacking is playful cleverness. And you're a hacker if you appreciate and enjoy playful cleverness. Perhaps your own, perhaps other people's, perhaps both. All I've ever experienced from people that call themselves hackers is, is helping us on so many fronts. And then we've only had a few malicious things. And again, I wouldn't even call those people um, hackers. They were connected to government groups trying to censor us. So, so what do you call someone who's malicious against good people online? Well, I, when I speak of breaking computer security, I call it cracking. Now, that can be done for good or for evil. There are lots of people who break computer security in order to steal from people. Uh, like there's this ransomware. It's a kind of malware that gets into people's computers and encrypts everything and says, we'll tell you how to decrypt it if you send us some money. Now, that's very bad. Uh, the people doing it, I would say, mostly are not thinking of playful cleverness. They just want some money. Uh, so I don't know if they're hackers, but they are crackers. So there, in other words, there are various different aspects of things. I wouldn't say that being a hacker intrinsically means what you're doing is ethical, any more than it intrinsically means what you're doing is unethical. Well, what about it's, this, Doctor? It's an orthogonal question. Sure. But lots of kinds of hacking are perfectly fine and don't hurt anybody. Lady Gaga's clothing is hacking. Now, expanding on this, Doctor Stallman, I want to throw this out at you. We now learn Stuxnet was put out by the U.S. and Israel. They then used Stuxnet to try to pass cybersecurity, their false flag. We now learn the FBI and government infects millions and millions of computers to, quote, look for one bad guy. And so the old conspiracy theory that it was really government corporations and virus companies putting out the viruses is now, is now being proven. Yeah. And that's, that's a malicious conspiracy indeed. Uh, it's... I don't know, I mean, maybe a little of it is hacking. A lot of it is cracking, breaking security. Now, my own hacking has not involved breaking security very much. I, that's not what I do. Occasionally, I found clever ways to turn off security in the systems that I administered. That didn't involve breaking any security. My access was authorized. Interesting. Let me ask you this question. Uh, back to the subject, because I don't think you had time to get to it. The phenomenon of what Aaron Swartz was doing and what happened to him, what is your overall thought on that tragedy? Well, from what I've read about what happened, <clears throat> it looks like some people at MIT when they saw that there was a laptop that was downloading lots of papers from from uh, JSTOR, I believe it was, uh, they
They didn't know 